Chris again, and I'm covering pagination in Firebase. So I get questions about pagination in Firebase all the time, and they're really difficult to answer because pagination, I, well, I can explain the two ways of doing it theoretically, and it's not difficult to explain verbally. Uh, it is a little tricky actually to implement them and to get it working correctly. So I kind of got frustrated. And the last time I was asked to explain pagination, I realized, you know, I'm just going to write myself a little paginator object in, in JavaScript that just does it. And then I won't have to answer these questions anymore. I can just say, hey, use my paginator object. It's this declarative way of paginating all of your, all of your uh, Firebase very, very easily. Okay, so what do we got here? First, let's explain the ways to paginate. So, so Firebase treats your data like streams. You've got, let's, let's uh, open up console.firebase.google.com and we'll look at the data I'm using for my example. Ah. This is just taking forever. Thanks, internets, for being horrible while I try to record a video. All right. All right, here we go. Here's the data. So I just saved a collection at quiver2.firebase.com slash Firebase Paginator uh, slash collection. And I've got a collection and it's just a bunch of push keys with the numbers one through 100 saved on them. So let's get this nice and big and legible. Okay, so it's very clear what we're doing here. We've got the numbers one through 100. And the, the way these sort, it's sorted so that the, so first I pushed one, then I pushed two, then three, then four, then five. So when you sort by, by key, do an order by key, we're gonna get this exact order that you see here. All right, so what I got here is my little paginator. And you'll see how it works. I can step back and it'll go, it'll step back, uh, right now page size is three, I can set that up to 10. Or how about we make it, I don't know, seven. Does that work? Whatever, it doesn't really matter. And we step back. We step back and page back through it to the top of the list. And then, we, then one is at the top. So one and two are the top of the list. And uh, 100 is the bottom of the list. So Firebase treats your data like streams. And so you're always thinking about adding new records. So it should be then 101, 102, 103. So let's say you're doing a chat application or tweets or whatever, and you're adding, adding objects. They're getting added to the bottom of the list. And so you really just want to paginate from the bottom of the list to the top of the list. You almost never want to paginate from the top down. So I haven't even set it up to paginate from the top down ever. And I'm not ordering by anything but the keys. The keys are uh, kind of like timestamps. They order sequentially by time, by, by millisecond. So actually, there's not much reason to do an order by child or order by value here. We're just going to order by key. So the entire this entire object I created just orders by key. And okay, so the first page, let's say we have, let's say we have uh, 10 10 records. There are two ways to do it. The first is an infinite pagination. So I just say, hey, I want the last 11 records. So I get records 90 here, 90 through 100. Now I then, I've got 11 records, not 10. I pull 11 and I take this key, this guy right here for number not for 90, I take that key and I stash it to use as a cursor. So when I page back, I will then end at this cursor. So first I request the last 11, and then if you click the back button, I'm going to request the last, I'm going to request another 11, but I'm saying, hey, give me the last 11, but ending at this key that ends in R O zero. Okay, so then I get this, so I'll end at this key, but I'll get 11 again. That gives me 80, 80 through 90. So then I display 90 all the way back to 81 with, uh, the 80th records key as my new cursor. So I'm just stepping back, use, requesting one more than I need, using that extra record as the cursor, stepping back. And I step forward, I do the exact opposite. 
So I've got, let's say I've got 10 records here, um, right here. I say, hey, give me 11, but start at the cursor for the 10th. So now I get 10 through 20. Well, I then pull off the 10th and just show 11 through 20. And the next time you go forward again, I say, hey, show me, get me 11 ending in or starting with 20. And then I display 21 through 30. Okay, so that's the first way. That's called, that's like an infinite pagination. The really nice thing is if I'm sitting at the bottom of the list, because I just requested the last 11, if the last 11 change on me, the data will actually change live. I don't have to refresh anything. It'll just change as I go. So if I add 101, I'll then, it'll then become, instead of the last 11 being 90 through 100, it'll then be 91 through 101. So as I, if I'm sitting at the bottom of the list, I, which I'm going to call the first page, which will be 90 to, 90 to 100 in this case, but I add 100 first, the first page will then be 92 through 101, then 93 through 102, and so on and so forth. So that's a nice little thing with infinite pagination. The other nice thing about infinite pagination is that it paginates infinitely. It scales infinitely. You're just walking up and down the stream. So if you've got a million records, it doesn't really matter because you're just, you're just stepping through the stream. You're not really accumulating any data. Um, the size of the record, the size of the collection doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's infinite pagination. So that's exactly what I'm doing with the code. I'm just stepping back through it like this. Okay, so finite pagination is a little different. So check this out. I can go to my record here and say, hey, uh, shallow equals true. So when I request the data shallow equals true, I get a shallow copy of my data with just true as the value. So if I've got really deeply nested data, it doesn't matter. I'm just getting trues and I'm getting the keys. So what I do in this case, this is going to be a finite pagination. I first run a rest request and I get all these keys. I just make an array out of the keys and I order the keys. I just sort the array. So now I've got all the array keys sorted and then I go and step through them. So let's get rid of it so we can see. Let's get rid of the, uh, the shallow equals true so we can see this a bit better. So once I've got all the arrays, I then go back and pull all the cursors that I'll want. So I'll say, hey, this is my hundredth cursor. So end, give me, give me 10 records ending in um, this key that ends in YV. Now give me 10 records ending in this key, so the 90, 90th key. Then give me 10 records ending in, in the 80th key. And so I'm just pulling every basically 10th key and I make a list of these pages. Um, and then I know how many keys I have, how many pages I have, so I can give you a list of, I can say, hey, I've got 10 pages. And you, you want to skip to page three, I can skip to page three, and I just go to the, the third page. Now the pages, of course, count from the bottom. So the first page is actually 91 through 100. The second page is 81 through 90. It doesn't really make sense to do the pages from the top. Okay, so when you come back here and see this, let's go back to, let's do five. For simplicity okay so we've got finite pagination I can then say hey I really want to go to page 2 or I want to go to page 20 I can skip to page 20 or I can skip to page 15 it'll just go to that page directly and that's nice that's great with finite pagination downsides to finite pagination um, if you're at the bottom of the list and new records get added you don't know about it you got to actually click a refresh to get any new records as they're added um, second, it doesn't scale super huge. So if you've got a ridiculously long collection, you're not going to want to request all the keys. That could be a really, really slow rest request. So you, you're going to have to get fancy in that case. Uh, probably, probably archiving data out of the collection into, say, Google Data Store, Google Cloud Data Store. Uh, I've used that before to archive really, really large collections. I'll say, hey, everything that's more than a week old, just pull it out, throw it in Google Cloud Data Store, and if I need it, the user can then like refresh it or pull it up with some sort of manual situation, but I'm not going to make it easily like paginate. I'm not going to paginate that data. That's just ridiculous to pa try to paginate super, super long collections. Okay. So if I'm doing finite pagination, I've got to manage the size of my data. I can't let it go infinitely long. Um, and, but I mean, I really like finite pagination otherwise because I get these fancy, fancy characteristics where I can just skip pages back and forth and I can say hey you got 20 pages so you know how many pages you have now let's say I switch back to infinite pagination okay, infinite pagination I've got a back button I've got a front button 
I can refresh it back just to the top. But I mean, you don't really know until you get to the end of the list that you're at the end of the list. You don't know that you have 20 pages. Okay. So real quick, just to show you how to use this guy, what this is. Yeah, there we go. Let's go to let's go to the GitHub. So I've done two things. I've made a pa Firebase paginator.js, which is just a, an, a regular JavaScript object that you can use in any framework or even in Node to just handle your pagination. And then I've created a Polymer element to wrap it up for the browser. So you can alternatively use the Polymer element. I did my demo in the Polymer element, but it's not necessary. You could use this with React, with Angular 1, Angular 2 jQuery, doesn't matter, vanilla, just doesn't matter. Okay, so Firebase Paginator is a JavaScript utility for Node.js in the browser that enables simple declarative pagination for your Firebase collections. It's been developed for Firebase 3.0, but it'll work for Firebase 2 as well. Dependencies, it needs the promise object. There are a bunch of asynchronous operations, so I just said, you know, I'm using promise, uh, new promise. If you don't have promise in your browser, tough luck. Really, that just leaves out IE. Um, and in the browser, I'm using XML HTTP request, so just to do and diminish the dependencies. Um, in Node, since dependencies aren't that big a deal, NPM works great. I'm using Axios for my HTTP requests. Okay. So install, NPM install, save, Firebase Paginator, Bower install, save, Firebase Paginator. I've uh, got it then NPM and Bower. Um, if you want to test, run it, run it in Node, NPM install, and then just run NPM test, and it should, it should work. You'll see all the tests, are like 40 tests passing where I paginate back and forth through the lists and make sure they work. All right. Oh, but if you want to run your own tests, you are going to have to set up your own uh, env.json. I've got a, a dist here, an env.json.dist. You're going to need to create your own list to work against your own collection to paginate through. But that's not very difficult. Just mess around if you need to test. Okay. Usage, pretty straightforward. If you're a node, Require it in. Let's make this a little bigger. Shoot, yeah. Okay, if you're a node, just require it in. Uh, it'll be on the window object if you're in a browser. So you can just say, hey, firebase.paginator. Um, okay, so once you've got your Firebase Paginator object, it's isomorphic. You just pass in a ref and you pass in any options you need. And I messed this up. This should say comma comma options after it. So I'll fix the readme later. Okay. And it gives you some functions you can work with. You can listen to all events, on event, off event, once on an event. Um, there's a reset function to reset the, the list, a previous to page backwards, a next to page forwards, and a go to page for finite pagination. All right, so the events are value event, which is just like your, it's kind of like a proxy for the for the, the Firebase value event. Whenever you, you change pages, I've got to query the data. When I query it, I run the Firebase, I get the Firebase value event, run some changes, fire my own value event. Uh, is last page, so you know we're on the, when you're on the last page and when the, ready, so you know when the, the initial load is ready. Uh, reset, next, and previous, just fire when the uh, reset, next, and previous functions are finished. And I've got my explanation down here of finite versus infinite pagination. So, you, I mean, you can see it in action. Uh, you can look through how I did it with uh, this HTML right here, this uh, Firebase paginator.html. It's not super complicated. I've kept the surface area of the object pretty, pretty just thin. And again, here we go. Here's the Firebase paginator element. So Firebase paginator, it takes a ref and options and gives you a collection and is last page, page number, page count, and you can listen to say on page number changed or whatever. Collection, the collection is an object, it's not an array. So I have it turn things into arrays for you. So if you wanna change how they sort or whatever, you gotta do it yourself. Um, yeah, these are the methods. And the events that it fires, it's all pretty straightforward. It's all, I mean, the Firebase, the page, Firebase paginator element for Polymer is just proxying everything straight from the object itself up. So if you want to create your own component for Angular or React, I would just proxy it in the exact same way. It's pretty straightforward. And the demo, again, you can see the demo. 
if it ever loads. That would be nice. Um, it just paginates through and shows you all the functionality you can get. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this. Um, I'm just going to refer everybody who asked me any more pagination questions to this video and to this GitHub repo. And I'm happy to expand the repo or make this work uh, if, you, if you find any bugs. So, all right. Thanks for listening. Bye.